This is the face of interest. Note that the gaze is riveted, the eyebrows are arched up, and the mouth is partly open. The brow is slightly furrowed. In the following two clips, you'll see how this works in action. You'll see the babies being interested in something over a period of time. In this clip, this infant is at the high end of interest excitement. He is generating his own excitement just because it feels good. It's an end in itself. This is the face of enjoyment, commonly described as smiling, genuine, heartfelt, smiling. Notice that the mouth is open and widened, the muscles are relaxed, the eyes are bright and shining. In the following clips, you will see enjoyment in action. This is the face of surprise, which was triggered by the jack-in-the-box suddenly opening up. Notice that the eyebrows are up, the eyes are wide open, the mouth is open, in this case slightly, and the lips are protruded. Babies do vary in how much their mouths open in surprise. Now we'll see some surprise in action. Here it is in slow motion. This is the face of the affect distress anguish. Notice that the inner parts of the eyebrows are arched up. Often the corners of the lips are pulled down, although they're not in this particular picture. There's a continuous vocalization and breathing, arm movement and kicking. It's a very active affect, as you'll see in the following clips. Notice also in this affect how painful it is to listen to these children cry. Notice how it sets up in you a feeling similar to the one they are feeling. This is a good example of the contagion of affect. It motivates the caregiver to attend to the baby's needs. It's just too uncomfortable to let it go on. It takes a lot to get an infant angry, and since most parents do not allow a problem to get sufficiently out of control to trigger anger, it was not possible to include a really good example of anger in this video. If you've ever seen a child having a temper tantrum, blind with rage, you have seen the power of the affect of anger. The infant you are about to see is expressing, for the most part, high levels of distress anguish 
but there are a few seconds of anger when he kicks his legs out. This is the face of fear terror. Note the raised eyebrows, fixed stare, eyes open wide, and frozen face. In the following clip, you'll see what triggered this fear. Tompkins called this affect shame, but the usual use of that word implies immorality and or incompetence. Immorality and incompetence are not attributes of the raw affect, so I think it is better captured by the word deflation. Here you see the posture of deflation. Note that the eyes are averted and downcast. He doesn't want to look at anything. His neck and shoulders are slumped. It is as though he is checking out from the world. In the next clips, notice how his head drops. These twins are displaying shyness a blend of two affects triggered simultaneously, interest and deflation. Sometimes the deflation is stronger than the interest and they withdraw to their mother. Sometimes the interest is stronger than the deflation and they make contact with their surroundings. This is a very good example of blended affects. More than one affect can be triggered at the same time. This is the face of disgust. Disgust is triggered when one has taken something into one's being and then wants to expel it. The head is forward, though that's not so pronounced in this case. The lower lip is pushed down and the tongue protrudes, though in this case it didn't quite get out of the mouth. There's a force to get out whatever was taken in. This is the face of dismell. Dismell is a word coined by Tompkins. It denotes the affect triggered when one wants to keep something from entering one's system. It is the affect most centrally involved in the experience of contempt. The upper lip is raised, the nose is wrinkled, the head is drawn back. Think of contempt when one looks down one's nose at someone. In the following sequences, we will see affects changing rapidly, one quickly replaced by another. This is one of the properties of affects. In infancy, they are short-lived. As we grow, they become connected to concepts, actions, habits, and so on, and thereby last longer. But as pure affects, they don't last very long. Interest. 
distress, interest, distress, distress. Interest, interest plus enjoyment, distress, interest. Interest plus enjoyment, interest, enjoyment, interest, interest. Interest plus distress, enjoyment, interest, interest plus enjoyment, interest, enjoyment, interest, interest, enjoyment, enjoyment, interest, interest, enjoyment, interest, interest. interest interest, enjoyment, interest, 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 enjoyment, interest, enjoyment, interest, 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 